How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Maverick Designs Woodworking Channel. Today we're actually not in the shop at the moment, we're in my house because I wanted to film this intro in front of this flag. But uh, that's what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how I make these wooden American flags. I'm sure most of you already know at this point that there are probably thousands of woodworkers that make these flags. You've probably almost certainly seen them before. You've almost certainly seen more than just this video. There are a lot of videos on YouTube on how to make these. Um, when I first made this one, this one's quite old actually, it's been there for years, but uh, it's one of the first ones that I made. And when I first started making these, uh, that's what I did. I looked at some YouTube videos and I watched a bunch of them. And uh, the thing is, is that, uh, you know, I realized you, can, you get a little something out of each one, you know, maybe not every single one, but there's usually some little morsel of information that will be helpful to you for when you make yours. And that is my goal today is not to make you watch another video, but you're here anyway. So hopefully this will give you one or two things that will help you when you try to make one of these. So uh, let's get started. All right, the first thing you need to do is make your stripes and back support pieces. Now, there are a couple of ways to do this, depending on what kind of stock you're working with. The easiest way is going to be to just buy one by twos that are eight foot long, um, dimensional lumber from your local big box store and then cut them to length. For a typical size flag, you need 13 strips or stripes uh, that are 37 inches long each. That translates to 14 one by two by eights, which will give you two stripes out of each strip. And then you can also get one backer out of each strip in addition to the stripes, but you only need four backers. So you can put the rest of the cutoffs aside and use them for yet another project like my American flag crosses. I have a very detailed video on how to make those out of scrap wood that I'll link in the description for you. They are my top seller by volume. And the best thing about them is that you can make them out of scraps like these. So check it out if you haven't seen it already. Uh, as I said, you will also need four back supports that are approximately 19 inches long. Now, when you use the pre-cut one by twos like this, you may have to adjust the length of your backers a little because even though a one by two is supposed to be one and a half inches wide, most of the time they're slightly smaller in my experience, which means that your flag will not be the full 19 and a half inches wide that it's intended to be once it's been assembled. I suggest that you lay out your 13 stripes once you've cut them to length, clamp them together, and then measure the total width of what your flag will be before you glue everything up so that you can make any necessary adjustments to the length of your backers first. There is no specific size that they have to be, but I like to make them about a quarter of an inch short at the top and bottom of the flag, or a total length of a half inch less than the assembled width of the flag. If your flag is not a full 19 and a half inches wide, I suggest trimming the backers down as appropriate. If they're too close to the top or bottom, they will be overly noticeable when the flag is displayed. Now, this isn't a project killer, but it does look better when they are less noticeable. On the other hand, I don't recommend you make them too short either, as you want at least an inch of coverage on that top and bottom stripe uh, for security. The stripes are glued together, but those supports are really doing most of the heavy lifting when it comes to holding these flags together. Now, the other way to make your stripes is a little more work, but your flags will come out to be the intended 19 and a half inches wide this way. And the method for doing that is to buy wider stock, like one by sixes, one by eights, one by tens, for example, cutting them to length first and then ripping them down to exactly one and a half inch wide strips. Both ways work, and I've done it both ways. Sometimes, you know, it can add some different character to your flags. For example, one by twos at my local Home Depot, as well as the stripes um, that I ripped down from wider stock, tend to have square edges, whereas the one by twos from my local Lowe's often have rounded edges. Um, they both make flags that look great, but the rounded ed edges give a, a slightly different aesthetic to the finished flag, you know, kind of like putting a chamfer on the stripes does, which you know, you can also do. Uh, either method makes a great flag. Like I said, I mix it up from time to time. 
I'm very picky about the grain patterns on my boards and I usually batch flags out when I make them. So I'll often have to get wood from multiple places in order to make enough flags for my batch. And sometimes it'll be a mixture of wider boards that I rip down and one by twos. It just depends on what's available when I get there and which ones that I like well enough to, to buy to use. But it all helps to make the flags unique and stand out from each other. The next step is the sand. Now you can do this either before or after you cut everything up, but I tend to do it after. I usually just hit everything with 220 grit, but sometimes I'll use 80 grit first if the boards are extra rough. Just make sure that you sand all of them the same way for each flag, because if the thickness of the stripes is too different, then you're gonna have a lot of trouble when you go to put on your stars. And these flags are meant to be rustic. There's no need to sand them down to be glass smooth. I mean, if you're making them out of exotic hardwoods and you want it to have a more polished look, you might do it for a flag like that, but it's not necessary or even desirable, in my opinion, for a flag like this. These are made out of construction grade pine and they're intended to be rustic. The more time you spend on them, the more you're gonna need to charge when you sell them. And there are a lot of people out there making these flags and you're gonna wanna be competitive in your pricing. What I do is I try to make mine stand out through their quality and their uniqueness. That's why I like to use laser cut stars instead of painting them on or carving them out by hand with a Dremel like a lot of other flag makers do. Um, it's also why I'm very particular about my grain patterns when I'm choosing my wood, why I burn wood the way that I do very specifically. Not that there's anything wrong with the way anyone else does these things. I just want mine to be different. I want them to stand out. I want to give potential customers a slightly different aesthetic to choose from. I mean, you know, I also make flags on the CNC, which is yet another look altogether. After sanding, it's time to burn. Now, I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about how I do this since I have an entire video that details how I burn wood. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend you do as there are several good tips and techniques that I share in that video that will be helpful to you if you don't already have experience torching wood for a rustic effect. Even if you do have experience, there might still be something useful for you to take away from that video. I learn new techniques all the time from my fellow woodworkers and YouTubers. It's always good to get multiple perspectives on these things. In any case, I'll link it in the description below, so check it out after this one if you're interested. I'll also add an affiliate link for the torch that I use in case you need to get one of these also. There are a lot of different ways to hang these flags, but my preferred method is with keyholes. It's just another added convenience that I like to add for my customers to make my flags stand out. Um, all I do is add a keyhole to the two outermost back supports. I just set up my router table so that the keyhole will be centered on the support strip at the correct depth. And then I set up two stops. One so that I can lower the support down onto the keyhole bit using that stop so that it will start the keyhole a couple of inches down from the top. And then I'll slide the strip back about a half an inch to the other stop to create the slot. Then you just move it back to the first stop, turn off your router, and then pull the support back off of the bit after it has come to a complete stop. It is important that you wait for it to come to a complete stop because it can grab and pull and kick the support out of your hands, which can be dangerous, and it will also cause damage to the keyhole. Ask me how I know. So... I forgot to film myself doing the supports for these flags or the, this, the flag in this video, but uh, this is the footage from doing the same thing for my cross supports from that video. It's exactly the same. The only difference is that the flag supports are a little bit longer than those in the cross video. Once you have your keyholes made, it's time to stain. Like burning, I have a lot to say about staining these flag projects. Here, I'm using uh, Scarlet and True Blue Minwax semi-transparent stains from Lowe's, but they have since changed the formula for this stain and along with that discontinued these colors. These two colors are, in my opinion, the best colors that you're ever going to find for these flags, especially the blue. I get lots of comments from people asking me where I get that blue from. Luckily, you can still get them, but there are a few tricks that you'll need to know and you'll need to be able to walk the paint counter person at your local Lowe's through these steps in order to get these colors. The new formula stain is not the same either and it comes with some significant challenges when applying it. There are tricks and techniques that I have figured out to make this easier. 
but I don't have time to go through all that in this video. And besides, I actually used the basically the last of my old stain um, on these flags. So I'll have to do another video with the new stain so that I can show you that. And I've been saying that I'm going to put out a video on staining and how to get these colors for the last couple of videos or so. And I'm sorry to those of you that have been waiting for that, but I promise it will be the next video after this one, as soon as I can get it done, hopefully within a week at the longest. Once I do, I'll be sure to add a link to it in the description. For everyone else, if you subscribe and choose all notifications with the bell icon, you'll get a notification as soon as I release it. What I do is once I have arranged all the stripes the way that I want them, I number them from 1 to 13, starting at the bottom. And then I separate 1, 3, and 5 into one group to be stained all red. I set 2, 4, and 6 aside because they're all white and will not be stained unless you decide to use white stain, which I don't do very often. I prefer the natural look. Um, and then I separate 7 through 13 into another group that will be stained half blue for the union and then either half red or white for the rest of the stripes. Um, so you're going to want to stain one, three, and five, all red, including the ends and, you know, the face. Uh, number one is also going to need one edge stained completely red as it is at the bottom of the flag and it will be visible. For all the other edges that are going to be in between the stripes, all I try to do is get a little color on the edge as much as I can. I do this um, in case the wood warps a little over time and it'll ensure that the continuity of the color is not off. You know, if it warps a little and then you've got a little white spot that pops up there. Um, I don't do all the edges entirely red because I do want to get the best glue adhesion that I can in between the stripes. It's just another little attention to detail thing that I do to ensure quality. Once the three reds are done, I'll line up 7 through 13 and mark out the border of the union. Then I use a hammer to tap razor blades across the lines to ensure I get a crisp, clean line between the colors. Next, I'll stain all of the union sides of 7 through 13 blue, and then I'll stain the other sides of 7, 9, 11, and 13, the odd numbers, red. The even ones are going to be white. And don't forget that you're going to need to stain the top edge of number 13 with red and blue as well, like you did number one at the bottom. Once all your pieces are stained, it's time for assembly. Now, I have a jig that I built several years ago to make this part of the process as easy and efficient as possible because, for me, assembly is the most stressful part of building these flags. What I do is I lay all my pieces out and then flip them over so that the front of the flag is facing down. You need to do this so that you can install the braces on the back. You have to be careful when you do this, though, so that you don't get them mixed up or oriented the wrong way. Again, ask me how I know. Uh, so next, I flip the pieces up on their sides and apply glue. Then lay them back down into place, making sure to butt the ends up against the stops on the jig so that they will be properly aligned and squared. Then I use a few F-style clamps to hold the pieces together, as well as several calls that are built into my jig to make sure they are all flat. This is construction grade wood from the big box store after all, so it's gonna have a bit of bend and twist to it, and this will ensure that it glues up nice and flat. Next I'll clean up any squeeze out with a damp rag and then install the back supports by applying glue, and using one and a quarter inch 18 gauge brad nails to secure them to the back of the flag. The important thing to be aware of here is that you install the two supports with keyholes on the outside ends with the keyhole at the top of the flag. Yet again, ask me how I know. At some point in the near future, I will do a video describing this jig in detail, and I will also make a set of plans for it that will be available on a website that I am also working on, along with other plans for all of my shop furniture and you know other projects that we'll do as the channel continues to grow, so keep an eye out for that. Once I'm ready, I'll announce it in a video. So again, subscribe if you want to be notified when that comes out. All right, so at this point, your flag is assembled and you can flip it over. You don't want to let it sit too long because you're going to need to flip it over and clean up the squeeze out on the front before it dries up. Now, if you don't have a jig yet, um, 
you know, again, like I said, I'll be putting a video out very soon with plans so that you can make this one, or there are several other ones on YouTube that will work just as well, I'm sure. But if you don't, I mean, I've seen other guys, they just clamp these things together and you can, you know, put some type of calls across them, you know, on your bench and you can, you can still do this without one, but having a jig obviously makes this much, much easier. At some point before you apply the stars, you're going to need to put a quick burn on them. And, you know, this is just done by a quick sweep of the torch. You don't want to linger too long because they'll get really dark really fast. And uh, I guess it just depends how dark you want them. But, uh, you know, just do a quick sweep over them with the torch, darken them up a little bit so that they match the rest of the flag. And then you're ready to put them on. Once the flag is assembled, it's time to add the stars. Again, I use one inch laser cut stars that I get from Amazon and I'll leave an affiliate link to them in the description below for you. I have a template that I made out of one quarter inch plywood with holes drilled in it at the center of where each star should be placed and I clamp that down on the union and then use a punch or a pick to make small holes in the union that I then use as references to lay out my stars. Now, I have been doing it this way for a long time but I have come to realize over the years that it is definitely not the most efficient way to do this. I will soon be making a template on the CNC that has the full cutouts that are slightly larger than the stars. That way, all I'll have to do is apply glue and set each star into the space on the template. I'll be making this soon, and when I do, I'll probably make a short video to demonstrate how it works, and then I'll add links to the website where it can be purchased. So if you're interested in that, again, subscribe and stay tuned. So... I used to use wood glue to apply these stars for years. The one that's hanging on my wall that you saw in the intro was done with wood glue. But it's kind of a hassle because it's a bit messy and you have to spend a considerable amount of time removing the squeeze out from around the star with a pick. And, you know, I used to, it used to take me an hour or at least to do this. But since I discovered CA glue, that's all I've used since. I'm using medium black Starbond CA glue here, and that works well, but medium thick clear is ideal. You get a tiny bit of squeeze out sometimes, but it stays close to the star and blends into the dark union well, so it's not really noticeable. But with the clear, you don't even have to worry about it. Uh, I just apply a small dot on the little hole that I made, and then I press the star into place. You can use accelerator here, and I used to, but it's really not necessary. In fact, I prefer to do it without now because it gives you a few seconds to move the star around to get it perfect and it still drives relatively fast. Uh, you just have to be careful that you don't move the star for a minute or two until it sets up. This method is much faster and with the new template, it will be even faster still. And finally, I apply my logo with an ink stamp that I have and then we're ready to seal it up. And I like to use lacquer for this. Lacquer is very easy to apply. There's no sanding in between coats required. It's easy to fix if it gets a little messed up. It's just great stuff. It puts a great durable finish on it. And it's really, really, really easy and fast to apply because it dries so quickly. You can literally put several coats on in like less than an hour. It's great stuff. So anyway, I just... Um, apply a couple coats to the back real quick, flip it over, apply three or four coats to the front, and we're done. Our flag is finished. And that is going to wrap it up for this project and this video. If you liked it, I'd appreciate if you leave a thumbs up and comment and all that stuff. But most importantly, the best way that you can support the channel right now is to subscribe. So if you're not subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you would do that for me, and I will see you next time. So until then, stay safe and happy woodworking.